Hey, hey, what's up guys? JWisp here and welcome to episode 5 of the Minecraft 1.18 Survival Let's Play. Man, we're only on episode 5, but we have made some amazing progress in our world so far. In the last episode, we did a little bit of everything. We made our enchantment table and got our first few enchanted items. We raided a pillager outpost. We made a spider XP farm. And we also got the bad omen effect from some, uh, some pillagers that were trying to take over our house. But the enchanting setup is on way to be very successful. We have tons of cows, which means tons of leather for our books, for our bookshelves. We have all the trees we need, which is another ingredient in bookshelves. We need lots of wood. But the other thing we need is lots of sugarcane. And I don't have a ton of sugarcane. I have a small, small little patch of sugarcane uh, down by the docks. I don't even know if I can see it. It's way in the distance there. Little patches of green by the village right under the wheat field. And that's really my only source of sugarcane. And so what I wanted to do in this episode is to make an automatic sugarcane farm. I want to show you guys a really easy yet simple design that's worked forever and still works in 1.18. It's also pretty much the most, you know, cost effective and efficient design. Probably one of the best designs. Plus, it's scalable. So you can make this pretty much one block big. You can make it five blocks. You can make it all the way from bedrock to the build height, uh, which is even increased now in the latest update. So... You can start off with a small farm and make it bigger as you need more sugar cane. But one of the ingredients we need for the farm is observers. And for that, we'll actually need some quartz. Besides that, I have all the ingredients I need. I have redstone, you know, I have everything. We just don't have quartz, which means it's probably time for us to, uh, to head to the nether. Now, here's what I want to grab. Oh, here we go. I want to grab the gold boots. That's what I need. And then we should have, uh, here it is, our obsidian. And then I think I have some fire charges. If not, maybe I have a flint and steel or I can craft one. I definitely have the ingredients. I thought I had some fire charges. Oh, here we go. Okay. We'll bring these. And so we'll make ourselves a nether portal where we can head to the nether and get ourselves some quartz. And maybe even explore around a bit just to see what our nether spawn is like. I'm not sure where I want the permanent location of the nether portal to be. But for now, I'll build it somewhat far away. Uh, but in the last episode, I told you guys that I promised before this episode that I would have a name for my horse. I don't have a name for my world yet, but I do have a name for my horse, uh, because we do have a name tag. Now, I don't have enough iron for an anvil, but we'll, uh, we'll work on that in the future. And the name I decided on for my horse is Loki. Uh, and the reason for that is because a few people commented it, actually, and a couple of the comments got a decent amount of likes. Uh, but I, myself, am a fan of Norse mythology, plus I talked about my aspirations of building a sort of Viking, Nordic, medieval themed village somewhere in the mountains, and to go along with that theme, you know, we can put our house there, so our horse's name is officially Loki, I didn't name the name tag yet, but as soon as we get an anvil, that is the first thing I will do. Okay, I think for now I'm just gonna build this nether portal on top of this hill, I don't really care, maybe this will be the permanent location, uh, I don't know, we'll have to just decide, I'll obviously, you know, in the future, build a uh, structure around this nether portal to make it look presentable, make it look like it's a good looking build in my world. Uh, but for now, that doesn't really matter to me. What matters is getting what I need. So, let's head inside and check out our nether spawn. Okay. Uh, here we are. Oh, I think I saw some quartz, right? Oh, yes, here we go. Okay, now we don't need a lot of quartz, uh, but like I said, we do need a little bit. You need a good amount for observers, though, and I'll need a few observers, so... Well, technically, I only need one for this farm, but, uh, you know, I want to expand the farm a bit, so I'll grab quartz as I see it. Plus, quartz are nice because they give so much XP. Before 1.16, the nether update, quartz used to be pretty much the best method of getting XP besides making a giant enderman XP farm. It's what I used to use to farm XP. I would just go to the nether and mine quartz because it took just a few minutes to get to level 30. Uh, but let's see, is this pretty much it? Is there nothing? Yeah, not a, not a crazy good nether spawn. We'll have to go through these little caves and see if... Maybe they lead to, you know, a more open area, maybe a piglin' bastion, maybe a nether fortress, something like that. I don't know, but I'll mine the gold around here, maybe some other time I'll just grab this vein. I'll look around a little bit to see if I can find more quartz, but uh, if not, at least we have a decent amount right now. Yeah, there really wasn't much to see around here, so I'm just gonna head back to my base. So if you've watched me for a while, you've seen me make this farm like hundreds of times, but I'll still show it off just briefly. I have pretty much everything you need, like, you don't need all this, but it's it's very simple, so I'm gonna make this farm five blocks wide, so you have your growing substance, which is either dirt or sand, whatever you want, 
and then any type of building block. I prefer stone brick just because stone brick uh, looks a bit nicer, but I don't really have any extra right now. So once I get some more, uh, maybe I'll do some mining. I'll smelt some more and replace this. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to fill up this entire back area with water since you need water for the sugarcane to grow. And then we can place our sugarcane on top of there. So we have this little bit of water right here. And what we're going to do is place our building block right on top of it. Uh, this is just going to, you know, give us a little bit of a building platform. So, we're at this point right here, we can't see the water, but there is water there, pretty simple. So, then we have a little bit of redstone here. I have some pistons, some observers, and some redstone. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to lay down this little line of pistons. The pistons will push the sugar cane after it grows, but on top of the pistons, we will have these observers. And you have to make sure the observers are looking towards the sugar cane, because the way it activates is... When the observers see that the sugar cane has uh, grown enough, it will activate the pistons, which pushes them. But to activate the pistons, we do need some redstone. So let's go behind the pistons here, build up a bit, and place a bit of redstone. So we'll see if I grab some sugar cane how it activates. Uh, yeah, once the sugar cane grows like that, the uh, observers activate, they all activate, pushes the sugar cane. Uh, but as you see, the sugar cane is kind of going everywhere. So here's what we can do. Use our building blocks. Uh, I recommend glass, honestly, because glass just looks nice and you can actually see what's going on inside the farm. But you don't have to use glass if you don't want to. I don't have a lot of glass right now, so I won't use a ton. But I'm actually just going to build some walls around the farm. These help to sort of contain the drops. And then here's what you can do. We have this little section down here. And so what I'm going to do is take my chest, place it right there, and, you know, I have one hopper going into it. You can line this entire thing up with hoppers if you want, uh, or you can do, if you only want one hopper to save money, uh, you can take your water, and I'm actually out of water. So let's go behind the farm here and steal some water really fast. We can do that just, and then, actually, you know what, we have to take it from this block. Did I do it? Boom, we did it. Okay, here we go. So we have our water, and what you can do is just use a line of water from either side to sort of flow into the middle so that that way you need much less hoppers. So I could do this and then I could place like for example I could put my chest uh, in the ground here and then we can place our hopper going into it. That way items will sort of like flow into the hopper and then into the chest. So you can do what you want. For now I think I'm gonna leave it like this but uh, hopefully you can do some mining and get some more hoppers. I'm just a little broke right now and then to uh, top it all off I'm just gonna use some glass panes I have. But yeah, this farm doesn't look the best right now. Again, once I have access to more blocks, I'll make it look better. What I traditionally do with this farm is I use stone brick and actual full glass blocks. But for now, you know, all this farm needs to do is work. It doesn't need to look pretty. That's pretty much the basic concept of the farm. Now, here's why I like it so much. Because if I wanted to, I could have just done one column and could have made it one block. Or you can expand this farm, you know, a whole chunk if you wanted to, many more chunks. And you can continue building on top of the farm if you want to. It's really simple to just continue building layers. All you need to do is, you know, place your next layer of dirt behind here, place the water, and just keep building up the farm. So, it's really simple. But honestly, even just a little farm like this with just a few pieces of sugarcane will get me more than enough sugarcane. As long as I AFK for a few hours. Now, it seems like a lot of people that make this farm, the only really issue they have is that their sugarcane doesn't grow. And you have to keep in mind, with any farm or crop in Minecraft, you need two things. You need light, and you also need to be there. So, you get enough light during the daytime. I do recommend lighting up the area around this farm, or you can light it up in the farm if you want to place torches or glowstone, just so there's light. But also, most importantly, uh, you need to be near the farm. <laughs> Nothing's going to grow if you're not near the farm, so I recommend you build it somewhere near your house. People will tell me how they built this farm hundreds of blocks away from their house, and then they go to visit it and notice that nothing grew. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to grow unless it's near your house. Or unless you put it in the spawn chunks of your world, which is pretty much the chunks you first originally spawned in. Those chunks are always loaded regardless of your location in the world, so you can be tens of thousands of blocks away, and they're still loaded in. But yeah, that's pretty much my very simple, easy sugarcane farm tutorial, and you can make it as big or as small as you want, and it's always reliable. Well, after making that sugarcane farm, I realized that I really don't have a lot of resources at all, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a mining trip plus sometimes just exploring a bit around is fun now I've gone in that direction a lot let's go over in this direction a bit so I can do some exploring along the way but also 
just to uh, mine. Basically, what I'm going to do is, first off, try to get out of these giant mountain, meadow, highland biomes. Because what's my Y level? Uh, yeah, 120. We're really far away from the lower Y levels where all the good ores we want spawn. Plus, you know, if we want to find anything like a mine shaft or a geode, those will be more likely to spawn at lower levels. Uh, if I can find a lush caves biome, that'd be cool because some of the blocks from there I would really like to uh, start building with like azalea bushes and uh, glow berries, stuff like that. So, uh, I'm pretty much just going to explore, try to get to a lower Y level, and if I find a cool mine or cave entrance, then we'll head in there. But if not, you know, it's not the end of the world and it's fine, and I can keep exploring. Ooh, this is pretty. I think I'm going to head through that birch biome, see what's on the other side, and if I don't find anything interesting by the time... I'm at the other side, uh, I'll probably just do my own thing and start mining straight down. Well, honestly, there's not much. I went out about a thousand blocks and it was pretty much just birch forest and meadow biomes all the way to here. I'm at this little beach and there is a village in the distance, which I guess is something to note, but uh, yeah, I don't really need anything from a village. Another main thing I was looking for is we have these random trees just sort of like there, 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 stuff like that. I was looking to see if any of these potential trees could be azalea trees because that's a bit of an indicator that there is a lush cave underneath. But for, unfortunately, I haven't found any. Lush caves are pretty rare. So what I'm going to do is just dig myself under the ground and hopefully we can find a cave or a nice area to start mining. Sometimes it's nice to mine far away from your house rather than right next to your house. Uh, because when you mine right around your house, the immediate area around your house, a lot, you know, you start to exhaust resources pretty quickly, you start running into old mines and old caves, so sometimes I like to just go out a bit. It's nice to explore, it's nice to see my world, see if there's any fun sites, but also, you know, you can sort of mine resources from other parts of the map, so that sometimes when you want to mine close to home, you know, there's still resources for you to find. But, let's head down and hope we can, uh, hope we can find something cool. Well, I kept mining straight, and I ended up in this pretty large cave. Now, I'm not sure what's going on, because I didn't enable full bright in my game. My brightness is normal, I didn't change my settings. For some reason, my game is on full bright. I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe it's just a weird little glitch or something. But, I'm not mad, because I can see in these caves, which is a plus. Now, I do have to be careful, because these caves have loads of spiders, zombies, creepers. The creepers are the, are the, they're the killers. Like, not only do they do all the damage, but also they really sneak up on you. So, I'm pretty much going to grab everything while I'm in here. I'm pretty much out of iron after building that iron farm, and I want some more hoppers, plus I would like an anvil so I can name my horse. I need coal uh, to smelt everything, plus I also want to smelt lots of cobblestone into stone and then make stone brick from that. Uh, oh, we gotta watch out for that sky creeper. Um, yeah, I don't know, pretty much any resource I can find. Obviously, diamonds, too. Down there is a low enough Y level that diamonds will spawn, I believe. Uh, so, if we get any, we'll be good. But honestly, I'm really just happy with coal and iron, because I need a lot of that right now. I didn't grab too much coal in the beginning just because I thought... Or, I didn't grab too much iron in the beginning because I thought that I wouldn't need it. But, yeah, turns out I need it. So, we'll grab a lot of it. I'm not going to grab every piece of copper, mostly because copper... Copper's like everywhere. I don't really have any plans for copper builds right now, so I don't care too much about copper blocks, but a good build combo is right here. Copper and your good old friend granite. Polished granite and copper go really well together. Granite by itself and copper go really well together. It's a nice, uh, you know, they're sort of similar-ish colors, but they go well together. I don't know, I know it's just a good little tip because it seems like a lot of people really struggle to build with copper. You know, it's a new block, but it's got a bit of a weird color. It's hard to uh, find a color palette that copper fits well in. But once you do, you can make some really awesome looking builds. Man, if I had Fortune 3, I'd be loaded in iron right now. I'll probably just make an iron farm pretty soon. I always usually build pretty small iron farms, but honestly, since I want to make a lot of farms in this world, I might make- Oh! Oops, that's, uh, that's my bad. Uh, since I want to make a lot of farms in this world, means I'll need a lot of pistons and lots of hoppers, which means that, uh, I'll probably build a pretty big, like, Iron Titan-type farm. I haven't done anything like that in a while, but I think it could be pretty fun. Okay, let's get down here. Let's check what our Y level is. Okay, we're at 14, which means diamonds can start to spawn down here, which is good. I'm just gonna mostly jump around trying to get iron and coal, but if we do stumble across any diamonds, uh, hey, it's a win. Get out of here. Boom. Oh! 
Okay, we do have to be kind of careful. There are a lot of mobs around here. Let's, uh, let's try to just kind of jump around quickly and see if we find anything of interest. Yeah, dripstone caves seem pretty darn common, but I'm really struggling to find lush caves. Man, I mean, this cave has a lot of iron, which is really nice, but I have not seen a single diamond yet, which is, which is quite unfortunate. I guess I'll grab some of the lapis, some of the coal, some of the iron. Honestly, I'm pretty good on iron now. I mean, we have a stack. I'll say I'll try to leave with maybe like around a stack and a half, and that'll probably be good. I don't need to mine every single iron vein, but after that, I might just float around the cave, see if I can find anything else interesting, but if not, it's, uh, it's probably time for me to head out. I don't want to spend the entire episode just doing like half an hour of caving. I prefer to save that for streams and whatnot. So if you're interested in live streams, definitely subscribe and leave a like down below. Plus all my social media accounts are down there if you wanna stay up to date with me or the series or the channel. I have my Discord where I'll talk to a lot of people in there. My DMs are always open. Or Instagram, Twitter. I post a lot more on Twitter. I don't post too often on Instagram, but from time to time, you will get cute cat pictures on Instagram or stuff like that. So follow those if you're interested in that. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good haul so far. So I'm just going to go through the back end of the cave and see if there's anything else that I might have missed. There is still tons of iron here. I mean, I could probably get stacks and stacks of iron if I wanted to. But honestly, this should tide me over for a bit. This should be good enough for an anvil and some more hoppers. I'll probably expand the uh, expand the sugarcane farm to be a bit bigger than it is now. I might add just another layer or two, but nothing crazy. I'm pretty happy with it, honestly. But yeah, so we'll need a few hoppers for that, and then I'll need a little bit of iron for our anvil. But then the rest of the iron can just go towards whatever. I doubt I'll need to make any more iron armor. My next set will hopefully be diamonds, given that I have some pretty good diamond luck in the future. But right now, it doesn't seem too good. I'll have to figure out good diamond mining methods for 1.18. And I'm actually not sure what the uh, new perfect Y level is. I always used to mine around Y level 12 or 11, because that was previously the best for diamonds. But now that, you know, Y level extends all the way down to Y level negative 64, I mean, who knows? I can look at the chart and figure it out, but right now, I don't know personally. If you know that information, let me know down in the comments below. It'd be, uh, it'd be really useful, and I appreciate it. Okay, we are back near our base after the mining trip, and I wanted to show off some of my plans. Hello, Mr. Goat. Uh, but here we are. We're up here, you know, we have our starter house, our farm, we have the bridge, we have view of the villages, and I think it would be really cool if up here around somewhere atop this mountain maybe over here i'm not sure we build sort of like an ice castle or an ice tower made out of ice and snow and in there will be my enchantment setup someone suggested this comment but i kind of tweaked it a bit and i think it could be a really cool idea not only is it a really unique idea you know making an enchanting tower out of ice but with my render distance up high we can pretty much see the peak of this mountain from all across our kingdom you know over there is where we're gonna have our main village and kingdom area i think we have that village we have our nether portal we have tons of areas around here and whenever we're over there all we can do is look up on top of this mountain and see a giant ice castle which will have our enchantment setup so i think that's really cool uh <clears throat> we have pretty much everything we need for our enchantment setup coming up we have wood for bookshelves leather now that we have our sugarcane farm we have sugarcane uh the only thing we don't have is the ice and unfortunately for that we're gonna need silk touch and I don't have silk touch so we'll still have to set up our enchantment setup somewhere before we work on that ice tower uh, but you know in the meantime we'll uh, just think of other things to uh, preoccupy our time for now I'll probably just do a normal enchantment setup maybe inside my house or just underground not decorated uh, but just placed somewhere around here oh and if you've noticed I also decided to start playing with view bobbing off and the reason for that is because some people talked about how with the view bobbing on, it made them almost a little bit dizzy watching my videos. And I remember in the past, every YouTuber had view bobbing on. But now when I look at other people, it seems like a lot of people also have view bobbing turned off. So for now, I'm having it turned off. View bobbing is just that little thing that makes your hand and shield bounce while walking. Personally, it looks a little weird to me without it off, but that's just because I'm not used to it. So hopefully, you know, since I'm moving around so fast all the time and stuff, it can make my videos, uh, a little less nauseating to watch. <laughs> and with that, guys, that's all for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed. I'm really excited because there's lots of really awesome things I have planned for this world. And some really fun build projects and exploration type things I really want to get done in this world. I've said it before, but seriously, thank you guys so much for the crazy support on this series. It's, you know, it's only, we're only a few episodes in and it has been insane. So, I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. 
thank you. But that's all for this episode. If you want to keep in touch with me, all my social media links are down in the description below. Definitely recommend following some of them. But my name is Jay Wisp, and that is all for today's episode. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Say so goodbye, Mr. Enderman. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I shouldn't have looked at him. I didn't mean to do that.